Here's how you can make a time lapse with motion blur out of video using Avidimux, Virtual Dub, and AviSynth. So you'll need Avidimux, Virtual Dub, and AviSynth. So first of all, you need to get your video files ready for Virtual Dub. So it prefers AVI files. So if your videos aren't AVI, you want to open them up with Avidimux. And at this point, if you want to join multiple clips, you can use File Append. Just choose the files in order. And then you want to make sure your output format is AVI. And you don't necessarily need to change anything else at all at this point. So as long as your output format is AVI, you can say file save, give that a name, use the name batch1, and give that the AVI extension. And you can just hit enter. That'll process very quickly because it's not actually changing anything, it's just putting it in a new container. So that's 15 minutes of video converted to AVI. Now here it is, batch one, ready to roll. So the next step is to write your code. So you'll want to get a text editor open and paste in your code, which you should be able to find in the description of this video. And it should look something like this. Now that first line just tells it which video to load. So you'll need that file path to be exactly right for you. And the next line tells it to merge the odd and even frames which will give us half as many frames and a little bit of motion blur. And then repeating that another three times doubles the effect each time. So by the end we have a significantly shorter video with a significant amount of motion blur. And then the last line just gives you your final output frame rate. Otherwise we'd end up with a video that was the same duration as our source file which wouldn't be a time lapse at all. So that's your whole code. Now you just need to save that. I'll save that as merge4 to remind me what's in it and give that the extension avs. And you can just hit save. Now here we have merge4 avs. So before you can run this, I believe you'll need the right codec for your video. Um, I have it. I don't remember how I got it. So I'm going to leave that part out because I don't want to give any incorrect or potentially harmful information on codecs and that kind of thing. Uh, you'll need to track that down yourself. So once you have the right codec for your video, you can just double click to run your AVS and hopefully you'll see this, your video loaded up in Virtual Dub. If not, if you get an error, that's not weird. Virtual Dub throws up errors anytime it doesn't like exactly what you give it, so uh, go back and check your file path quite often if you miss any little quotation mark or a single character, it'll completely flip its business. And the same with any other part of your code. If you're missing a comma or anything at all, it'll just straight up not work. So don't be discouraged if you get an error. That's um, I get more errors than not. So just check your code. And after that, make sure your installations are all good and you've got the codec. Then what you need to do in Virtual Dub is go to Video Dropdown is compression and again this is reliant on your codec so hopefully you'll have the H.264 encoder so you just need to click on that you can configure it if you want to 
uh, you shouldn't need to. So you can just click OK. And then it's ready to save. So you can just say File, Save as AVI. And I usually leave the um, AVS name there to remind me which AVS I ran it from. And then since I'm expecting not to get exactly what I'm after the first time, I usually give that a number. So I'll save that as merged01. Hit save. Now virtual dub starts working its magic there. Um, sometimes it doesn't look like it's doing anything. This progress bar doesn't move smoothly, so you won't necessarily see anything right away, but before too long you should see some movement, so that would just process and uh, that'll take however long that takes, but you get a preview of what to expect, so for your benefit I'll skip ahead to when it Okay, when that box vanishes, that means virtual done, virtual done is dubbed. Oh, dubbed. So, there we have it. Merge 401 is our output file from virtual dub. So, let's see what we got. Now that's me whistling to myself in the car, I think you can hear that. And as you can see, the um, the code the way we have it doesn't sync the audio with the video, so if you want to do that, I think you'd want to edit your audio in something like Audacity, and then you can probably put that in with your script or your AVS file or you can attach it to your video file beforehand. I think the um, the output will always be unchanged in the audio department. So, yeah, once again, audio is not, not exactly my thing and it's not really what I'm doing here, so. So that's that, that's a um, time-lapse with motion blur. And what you can do, I'll just, these tend to stack up, so I'll close virtual dub there since that we got what we came for. But what you can do is go back to your AVS, and this is the cool thing once you've got your framework, you can make changes. So I'll just copy this line and paste it in again, and paste it in again, and that's going to exaggerate the effects. So I'll save that and then you can just run it again and then we need to set this up again, doesn't take long just choose your compression and then once again save as AVI this time I'll call it merge for well actually no I shouldn't I shouldn't, I shouldn't have called it merge for to begin with, I should have called the AVS something different but I'll call this merge 6 one. And now once again just hit save and then virtual dub's gonna go to work. And that'll give us a new file with higher speed and more motion blur. So once again I'll skip to the good part. Okay, that took around six minutes, which I think was the same as merge four. And that would be, I guess, because it still uses every frame. So now we have Merge 6. Let's see what came out. It's quite a bit quicker, as you can see. And that'll loop and play again. And as you can see here, Anytime I pause, lots and lots of motion blur. Uh, no stationary blur there, which is good, otherwise it'd just be a big mess. So 
so that's it for a time lapse from video with motion blur using Avidamux, Virtual Dub, and AviSynth. And I'll check those file sizes too. That one we just watched came out at 14.4 meg, and the one before it, 64.7. So the shorter your output is, obviously the less frames you have. That's a drastic difference though, I'm actually surprised it's such a difference. Well, it is a quarter of the time. Yep, I guess that checks out. Alright, thanks for watching.